Cloud leopards have these beautiful mottled cloud-shaped markings. Some of my favorite characteristics, they have those beautiful long tails, those huge paws. Some have called them the modern saber tooth because they have the largest canine to skull ratio of any cat that is living. Their mouths can actually open to 100 degrees wide. They're worth saving as a species and they're worth caring for as individuals. Clouded leopards are sadly in trouble. They're listed by U.S. Fish and Wildlife as endangered and then the IUCN puts them on their red list as vulnerable. The big goal of conservation genomics is to first measure the genetic variability of different species that may be threatened. And then one of the second goals is to think about ways that you might be able to maintain that variation. BYU was asked to assemble and annotate the genomes for two clouded leopard species. It's not easy to obtain samples of clouded leopards. The first mainland clouded leopard we obtained through the Smithsonian. And for the second species, the island species, we were really lucky to work with colleagues from the UK and from the Sabah Wildlife Department in Malaysia to obtain a sample from a wild leopard. The main surprise in our phylogeny was mostly that these two clouded leopard species diverged much earlier than previous estimates. During our study, we actually estimated a new divergence date between the two species that was incredibly earlier than previous estimates of around 1.41 million years ago. We actually estimated the divergence to be closer to 5.1 million years ago. I was really excited to learn about BYU's genetic study. While we knew that there were two separate species of clouded leopard, we did not realize exactly how distinct they were and how long ago in time they diverged. The fact that they're so distinct, it does change the priorities and how we approach the problem of saving both species. These two species really look similar. I mean, if I was to go out in the wild and one ran past, there's no way I would be able to tell you if that was an island species or a mainland species. And this really kind of highlights the importance of using genetic data to think about conservation or to think about evolution. I think in the future, we need to incorporate genetics into more of what we do with these endangered animals. The cloud of leopards that I saw yesterday, one of them started coming towards me and, and it's like their eyes pierced through my soul. And having that experience really helped me realize that this is alive and it's beautiful and we should preserve it. Thank you.